true. We're going live, bruh. Mark Hunt. What's up? What's up, dog? Put that, tilt that bad boy up. Yo. We in Thailand making it happen. Um, why Thailand for the camp? Uh, I like Thailand. Uh, Thailand's good. The weather's good. Um, it's closer to Russia. <laughs> it's more or less on the Russian time zone. It's pretty much what it is. And um, yeah, weather's great. So I like your training at Targa. They're good. Uh, everyone's on the same budget, which is exercise. And um, that's what we're, we're about. And that's why it's Thailand. The weather's good here too. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I'd never been to Tiger Muay Thai before and I'd, I'd sort of like heard of it, but I didn't really kind of know what it was all about. But the facility here is ridiculous. Yeah, it's like, amazing. It's, it's un- unbelievable. Eh? Like it's massive. Great place. Yeah, I came here like fucking 12 years ago, I think, and there was no, there was none of this middle bit here. Um, um, and um, some of the people that were here when I first came to this place were still here now. So, you know, and I was like, not much was on the street, but it was pretty good, you know. So, I came back for training. Great place to exercise. Everyone's on the same bars. There's healthy food everywhere. And it's cheap. It is cheap. And the food, dude, the food's been so good. Like, this whole trip that I've been here, I've just been tripping out. Because, like, you, you obviously expect, you're like, oh, it's Thailand. I'm going to get some good Thai food. But, like, fucking everything's good, bro. Like, we had, because uh, I was in Rawai at Absolute MMA. And they had a shack there as well. So we were just at the shack pretty much every Everything, training yeah. session. The, yeah. shack's got, the shack's got some good food. Um, yeah, they give us a discount there down at the one here. I think Use the, the promo code Mark Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no promo the code. Shack. Hey, that's <laughs> just for me, me and my guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nick, uh, he's, a, he's a great guy. I think um, gives us a discount 30%, just like uh, Muscle Bar too down, uh, down the road there too. So it's good, cheaper and plus cheaper, but also with the discounts here. So the food is really healthy and good. Mm. good people yeah. um so you've got bam bam with you you've got tyson pedro with you so i'm guessing you boys are having a bit of a laugh too while you're training yeah well not really much uh, a laugh but it's just training <laughs> um yeah the, the um yeah <laughs> anyway those boys are a bit of a g up or what are they good they're young you know they've got uh i think they've got their fights uh, coming up soon so they're doing their own camp which is great so uh you know i've got russia coming up got a couple more fights left with some really amped about and um there, there's definitely like a genetic proponent to it like some people are just genetically more susceptible to those kind of uh brain injuries and i don't know man it just seems like you're a super fucking clear dude that doesn't really show a lot of signs and you've been fighting the baddest motherfuckers with the heaviest hands for a really long time so it's like i don't yeah. know i think i think old school's training and old school Exercise is a lot different from, from the guys these days. I think uh, everyone trains a lot smarter these days. I mean, I mean, you look at, uh, I say it to a lot of the guys, I mean, the Thai fighters here, you know, they train from, they start fighting when they were about five or six, training you know, really young. But they, the mileage they put on the body, I don't think the human body is supposed to take that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. A, a, a young Thai fighter, you know, train, runs 5Ks in the morning to warm up. He does countless rounds on the pads. He hits the bag. He shadow box for... He skips 15 minutes and he does that twice a day. Yeah. So you're doing high. 10Ks a day plus the rest of the bags, plus there are thousands of hits in the pads, you know, and then they do that six times a week. Mm. And then so they, they're doing And then they 60, fight at uh, Bango Boxing Stadium for... 10,000 10, yeah. bucks or even a thousand bucks. So look, he does 60, uh, 60Ks a week. Yeah. He does more than a marathon one a week. I don't think... Well, that's why I say uh, when the Thai fighters are actually 16 or 17, they're the world champion or they're retired. Yeah. There's no way the body's supposed to take this sort of thing. You know, 60Ks a week in running. That's fucking It's heavy. more than a marathon a week. Yeah. And then and you add in the rest of the count and stuff, and there's just no way that you're supposed to do that. And especially, and that's a 60 kilo guy, maybe a 40 kilo a kid. Yeah. So you just times that as you get older and heavier. There's no way there's fat guys like me going to do that or be able to do that. It's not supposed to be for the body. I just say, and I think training a lot smarter, listening to your body, listening to how it's supposed to be. And, you know, I mean, the work is done when the lights are off, you know, and when you actually are supposed to shine is when the lights are on. Yeah. And people are watching. But um, I think you got to train a lot smarter these days. And, and then, you know, from past experiences, you know, like uh, evolution has showed us. Yeah. That's not the way to do it. Yeah. Are you, are you like off when you're not in camp or are you? I hate st- training. Are you, you know, still I'm, training? It's funny. People say, 
you know, me being a professional fighter, training is my livelihood and everything. I hate training. Mm. It's uh, I don't train at all. I don't even go into the gym. Is the good bit. I don't even go into the gym. I, I mean, if I have to go and do stuff, I'll go in there. Yeah. But you'd be dragging me in there, and it'd be for some percentage or money or something. I would never go into the gym unless I'm doing something for something for someone. You know so you're just planning on blowing out when you retire? You I don't know. I, I said to myself, "You'll die of a heart attack if you don't try train." I said, "Well, I would die. You could die of anything." these days is there, is there fucking, something that you enjoy that's physical though that's like not that you can't put in the bubble of like training because i mean for me like i've never been a a big training dude but since i got like heavy into jiu-jitsu the training of that to me like i don't really think of that as training as such so i mean is there something that you've got that is kind of physical that's not necessarily like that's not training you're not feeling like you're having to drag yourself in i don't know man i i i've never <laughs> I mean, there was one time in my in my my life when I was younger, and I was when I was trying to climb. When I enjoyed training, I enjoyed getting up, and and everyone has their own different vices, especially with training. Yeah. People train to get rid of demons. People do a lot of stuff, especially with exercise. Exercise is good for the soul, mm. especially for the mind. For myself, when I was younger, climbing, I was like, I used to love running. I used to run pretty well. You know, I could do an indoor track in the eleven point three, and I was a prop forward. <laughs> Which is pretty good for a guy who was 100 kilos at, the, at that uh, thing. But um, then after, after that, you know, I mean, like I said, I only like training that stage. When I was climbing after that, it, it was, uh, it's hard because you push yourself here, then you got to get here, you got to get further and further away, you know, uh, past the wall every time. Just um, as you said that, some fucking yoked CrossFit chick walked past the window and that just like, they're people that exercise for the complete fun of exercising. And I don't well, have that gear, man. I, I don't, don't have that I, gear. I, I don't, I don't get, like I said, I see, I see a lot of people, especially here, um, I don't get that with the, with the people. People are supposed to go on holidays for holidays. People come here and holiday, holiday exercise. That's what I'm that's you know, what A lot I'm of thinking, people see yeah. here coming on holidays to lose weight, which is good, but um, a certain amount of exercise, I mean, not the amount of training I do, but you want to, wouldn't tell about my physique, but, you know... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. These, some of these people are just nuts. They just love training, CrossFit training. It's a, it's a good way to live, but um, it's not for me uh, how these guys do it, extremely do it. That, it. It must be a trip to look back. Because like, I feel like you don't really ever look back at your career when you're kind of in the thick of it. Because it sort of doesn't really... There's no real reason to. But it's like as you get towards the end... Like when you look back now, or you must be sort of starting to get into that reflective stage. Is it a crazy? Is it a crazy life? Like crazier than you ever thought your life would be when you were like growing up in in New Zealand, or or when no, you were a kid. Mate, I I've written I've written a book. I've got a documentary coming. I've written a book about my life. I can't believe I even wrote a book. I said, how the fuck am my punk, my punk ass ever going to write a book about what I've ever done? You know, who wants to air their dirty laundry out in public? Yeah. Funny thing is, I've written a book and it's uh, helped a lot of people. Yeah. You know, Born to Fight has helped a lot of people, especially that have mentioned me on my fan page. And it's great, you know, Ben McCavey wrote it. He's a great guy and I'm glad I actually wrote it to, 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 to um, you know, to, what do you call it? To, to structure or to, to, to put points where your whole life is, things have happened or changed. Yeah. Or the moments in your life where you think, oh shit, I'm glad I made the right decision there because... You know, like Ben said, I mean, only in, when you've walked down the road, hindsight is when you walk down the road and you fuck, oh, I realize I made the wrong choice yeah. in this road. Yeah. But, you know, for, for my life, like fighting wasn't even supposed to be a part of my life yet. You know, 30 something years later down the track, you know, one of the best fighters in the world is still going and the oldest. Mm. You know, I, I, I didn't uh, go to martial arts school as a kid because we couldn't afford it. I just, the yeah, first time I've ever seen uh, uh, karate or martial arts was Bruce Lee on, on the thing, on the big screen. And then the second time was some Kaka Shin fighters in, in the local school where I let some fireworks off and they all try to kill us. We try to take off and they try to, you know, because it's a hole, it's loud. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and all these huge men with their white suits on, of, you know, Kia! whatever the heck it is. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, let's fucking let off some double happies in there. <laughs> and um, that is uh, my first experience of martial arts. And yet years later, you know, after an altercation on a, on, a, on a nightclub, you know, the doorman becomes my first trainer. Really? Four days later, I'm in that same nightclub punching on uh, in a Muay Thai fight. Fuck, are you serious? 
That's so that's how your career began. Well, that's how I started. That's how I found fighting. No shit. I mean, I, I so was you getting a punch up at a at a club, and then the bouncer says. Hey, well, bro, it, there's something here. You, you should fucking actually do this for real. He said... He, uh, he didn't... Because there was no end there. Right then, there was only K1. But uh, there wasn't even K1 there. But um, he saves me from being arrested by the cops. It was actually my mate's uncle, Sam. He becomes my, becomes my first trainer. Four days later, down the road, he says to me... Before that, he goes, oh, you, you, you think you're tough. Because I was, like, young. I just got out of jail. I'm like, just, Big motherfucker. Sure. What, what what you want what you want what you need you know <laughs> it's like i got a fight on this way what, what's that kind of what, what fight are you talking about muay thai the fuck is muay fuck thai is that shit? <laughs> just come here come to try and come to training at my gym blah 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 and you have a fight this week four days later i was in the ring in there some no club walking out going what the fuck it's like about a thousand or three hundred people it looked like about thousands of people because you know yeah, it's like yeah. what the fuck are all these motherfuckers in here with the lights on and i was like holy shit i'm doing it i'm walking out don't even know what the fuck i'm walking out to it do you remember your walkout song i was it was um it was um freddie mercury another one bites the dust oh, <laughs> another one another one another one bites it. yeah love that song fuck it so i dropped him i knocked him in the second round and um, he was 30 kilos heavier than me. Big uh, Cook Island guy with a fucking do-rag on his head. I'm like, what the fuck? Did he fight with a do-rag on? Yeah. He like had a singlet the- on. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is some fucking hood this shit some right here. This shit. is some hood shit right here. Hey, I had no experience of anything. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's uh, a trip. not in the actual ring anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah. But it was funny that, you know, he was a uh, hectic. Was, uh, you'll never forget that. Night. I got him first. That changed second your life. Run. Well, it didn't change my life. It, it, it set me in that, uh, yeah. it introduced me to Muay Thai. And then from then on, I just kept traveling around New Zealand. Uh, every time I saw Sam at a, a different club, oh, I'll come to fight. And uh, I just, I was quite, um, you know, muscular then because I just got out of jail. <laughs> so what did you go to jail for? Um, aggravated robbery. Really? So uh, you're a fucking shit kid, eh? You're well, one of yeah. them. I wasn't one of them. I was just, <laughs> I actually just look at my, my child is, is just surviving. Yeah. My right. child at the end of the day. So, and it wasn't like a aggravated robbery with a guns and a bank just or fucking guns in a shop. Just these guns. I just went and gunned someone for his shoes, <laughs> <laughs> which is wrong. It's not funny, but uh, you know, it's wrong. I, I paid my dues for that and that's it. So it's not a good thing to do, but. So um, what was it like growing up in New Zealand in that? In, what, what, what well, era you could, did you, could did you grow def- up in? Um, I grew up in the era of uh, so what you said the Canberra 70s? Raiders, the Canberra Raiders being the premier. Yep, Mal Meninga, Big Mal, Ciro Brasunen, Bradley Clyde, the youngest footy superstar ever, sixteen years old when he started. Canberra Raiders, you know, so, Ferguson, so you Ruben like Wiki being. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. grew up in that area with um, with uh, playing in the same footy area as Ruben Wiki and and that era of. Uh, but so know, was that the seventies? Or I was born in the 80s. 70s, early 80s. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what was Auckland like in the early 80s for a, a family that didn't have any money? Well, you know, I got a book out called Born to Fight. You can download that or you can buy that on Tinder. Not yeah. Tinder, Tinder, I think it is. Tinder. You, so Not you, Tinder, Tinder. So you're the first person to release a book on Tinder. <laughs> and then they can just Well, do I, I know some people that can release books on Tinder, but, <laughs> 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 but Tinder, uh, is it Tinder? No, nah, Kindle. Kindle, Kindle, right? Kindle, yeah, yeah, Kindle, yeah, Kindle. I got, is a, I got you, bro. Yeah. Um, so iBooks also you can purchase on there. And read about if you read about my life story and um, how I got to be talking in this wonderful podcast, Gypsy Tales, and uh, and you're like, holy fuck. Yeah, no, it's definitely it's a because I mean I haven't I haven't looked like crazy deep into your story. Like I've been a fan of your fights forever, and then obviously through Fabio, who's my coach that that does some jujitsu stuff with you, but. Yeah, like I never, I never knew that background. I definitely didn't know that you went to jail and then that you had your first Muay Thai fight in a nightclub. Like, it's a pretty fucking crazy story. I actually am going to download that book for the flight, I reckon. Yeah, you'll, you'll get a bit of extra info. A lot of people uh, have read the book um, in three days, two days. It's a, it's um, it's an interesting read, but it's um, the thing about it, it's, it's honest. And yeah. at the end of the day, it, uh, well, you, that's kind of been your signature, man, through your career. Like you've never been afraid to call uh, people on bullshit. You've it always seems like you've been the 
you know, like the Aussie battler kind of bloke, even though you're Kiwi. But it's like you that that spirit of just that honest dude having a crack. Uh, and it's kind of, I guess, been like a trademark through your career. And maybe that's why you always have been so popular with the fans. Because, dude, honestly, no. man, like you would be one of the most popular heavyweights of all time in terms of fan favorite like i don't know one fucking person that goes yeah mark hunt's a dickhead i i i, I know a lot of people that call me dickheads and fucking cunts and whatever it is. yeah the but are they, are they are the they day, decent people though i don't know i don't like i said i don't care what they people that they say about me at the end of the day because i never get out of bed the thing is for me um a lot of the shit that i i i, I say and do it's, it's just what happens what it is you know what i mean shucks i never wanted to be a fighter it just came about here and said, oh, cause I think God said, this is what you're going to do with your life and that's what you're going to do. You know, I was in um, different jobs. I didn't finish school. I, I run with a, a, a shit crowd, or I shouldn't say a shit crowd because they were friends back then. We were all just trying to live. Um, and young kids, um, I did a lot of mistakes when I was a kid, a lot of mistakes. That's why, that's why I wound up in jail twice. Yeah. You know, I was a menace to society. Cause I, but um, how much of that though is like product of your environment? Because that's I mean, home life. I don't blame. Yeah. You know, I, I I know now that it wasn't normal how 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 living was, and 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 the end of the day, you, I, I mean, my parents, you can't even. I don't even think you can blame them because they had no idea how to. No one um, told yeah, them. No, for no sure. one told them how to do stuff. No one told them to tell me how to lift the toilet seat up. No one told them to tell me to change the sheets every two days. And then no one told them to have a shower every two days. No one told them that shit. That's not normal though. The thing is, you don't know these things. Yeah. As a kid, well, you, you don't know, know what you don't know. You don't know, and you can't blame for not for not knowing. If their parents didn't teach them, it just becomes a cycle. Yeah. So I'm glad I've broken the cycle. You know, thanks to my wife, I've broken the cycle, so my kids don't have to worry about that. So end of the day, I don't care. Right now, my kids, I don't give a fuck what they do. My son's a gamer. He's ten years old. He's built like a tank, and my girls don't give a fuck about anything. I, I just want them to enjoy their life. Their yeah. life. I want them to, to them to enjoy their childhood. I don't want them to grow up as fast as I did because I had to grow up fast. Yeah, because you had to look you know? after yourself. I was running the streets of fucking who knows what, you know, uh, you know, groups calling, all this sort of jazz. But I was, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's hard to change. And that's our demographic. That's someone from uh, someone, someone like me from our side of the world. There's a lot of me's, just like there's a lot of me's and all's. You know, for our demographic, it's different. Yeah. Just like uh, another guy... Um, that another book that Ben wrote, a guy named Ding Ding Adud. So he grew up in Sudan, which is another demographic and another yeah. different lifestyle. So his lifestyle, you know, where I was hiding in a tree at eight years old, running away from home, eight years old, he was he was carrying around an AK at yeah. eight years old, shooting people, living a war, and that's their demographic. So yeah. you know what they see as hard when, we, when they look at us, they go. It's not fucking hard. It's yeah. a fucking joke. You, yeah. you, you're hiding in a tree like a fucking monkey. Fuck, I will shoot you motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, a different scenario yeah. altogether. So, you know, uh, like in their life, in their side of the world, that's how they survived. They survived gunfire. They survived all that shit. If it was war-torn, that's the way it was. Just like yeah. for us, ours was just, oh, for guys like mine, it was like that. It wasn't, you know, I'm just saying, when I put my story out there, it was just for those that could... Um, because there's people that can relate. Can there's, relate. There's, there's people, yeah. obviously, there's only a tiny fraction of society that can relate to you having to step into the cage and do that. But a lot of people but, can relate to the struggle that led to that, right? Yes, but that's the thing, though. I mean, I think the greatest fighters on earth, and that's my opinion, too, the greatest fights ever on earth have been the guys that come from the worst struggle, the poorest guys. Fighting for me was a way of freedom. Yeah. And I think it's always been a way of freedom. Uh, but people have looked at it differently from now. They think, ah, oh, fighting is cool. You know, anyone can do it. No. I don't think so. There's a, there's, I mean, <laughs> there's a fine line of people uh, that can actually make a cross from, from, a, from, from doing it. And there's a fine line. And those are the people I think that's, that had no choice. The, the, the hardest workers are the ones that have been there and goes, ah, oh, man, this is, it's just survival. It's a, it's a necessity, right? It's survival. And there's, I mean, there's even like a, like a warrior gene that that scientists can like identify in people there's like certain uh there's certain like things in in people's dna structure they actually call it the warrior i don't gene. know to be honest man i don't know that but what i do know is i think in an environment that you bring a kid up into if it's a real harsh environment if he's getting fucked up every day thing every day that's what kind of lifestyle he's going to lead yeah you're going to teach him to be 
you know, mentally fucking in here and mentally ready for this sort of lifestyle. So I think my child will help me to be a fighter. I said, oh, well, you're born for this shit. So that's why the book's called Born to Fight. Because mm. at the end of the day, I've been, like I said, I've been struggling as a kid for my circumstances all the way here. And mm. I'm still going. This is, this, is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So One of my, uh, one of my best mates growing up, we grew, I grew up in North Queensland. It's kind of like rough area. And uh, no, not to that extent that you had to kind of go through. Hey, my ex, like I said, my extent is there. Mm. Like someone else, it could be someone else's that says, ah, oh, fuck, mine's here. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. it's all relative, you know, every, yeah. Every, it's all relative. Everyone's different, man. But his, his dad used to kick the shit out of him. So we we're like fucking 12, going to school together every day, and his dad would kick the fuck out of him. And then he'd go to school, and you'd see, like, these kids would be picking on him. And then he'd just fuck these kids up. Because it's like, what 12-year-old's going to kick the shit out of him as hard as his fucking grown father yeah and you, you I know, understand it you, I, you see that you see like the way that like for him man i wish he was a fighter because <laughs> yeah. he's in just a gnarly dude like his his perspective and and what he how he uh thinks about fighting is so different to these kids that come from these good home and they're just bullying to try and be how, cool at school that's and, how he's been educated that's how he's been uh how do you call it? he's been like programmed programmed by his dad mm. similar to, i understand that because my dad was a similar to thing he was good on, on on the mental side especially he was good on the on the, on the physical side as beastly so end of the day that the the fight is different with everyone just like yeah. uh, you know what we think hard is hard to someone else what they think is easy i mean that's just the way it is it just depends on where you come up in this world when you um when you saw that once were warriors movie when that came out what did you think about that? Because I actually just watched that again, like I just, recently. I, I think that's sort of for that me. Was, that, that was a pretty heavy reflection on New Zealand culture at the time. It, it, it's a, it was a reflection of a lot of a lot of the families there struggling. But you know, I, I like when I look at that shit. I just it makes me laugh. I love. I don't. know, That's why I'm fucking weird like that. It, it make people fucking getting happy and shit. It just makes me laugh. Like that. Fuck. That's fucked up. Because you know? <laughs> I can assimilate to a lot of that shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like I. It's just it's stupid though the way I think about it. You know, I um when I first saw Rambo, uh, the movie where he's tied up, he's getting tortured. I'm like, fuck, that's my dad doing that to me with a fucking all this shit. You know, it's it's weird as, you know, I understand what your mate was going through. Like I said, I missed a lot of school because of you know, bruises and broken, um, yeah, and a lot of shit like that. So it's you know I understand that. And then I guess when you, then when you go fight someone that's like your age, your size just doesn't seem like a fair well, fight. Well, nothing then, at school it? ever fazed me. Nothing at school uh, made me cry. And the only thing that made me cry at school was the emotional stuff. Like, you know, when everyone was pulling out their lunch and you know, I didn't have nothing, I'd pretend I was cleaning my desk. That shit would make me cry. When the teacher would ask the other kids, oh, has anyone got anything to mark? You know, that made me cry. It still makes me feel a bit emotional now about it because that shit is just, the, the hitting and the violence shit doesn't worry me. I mean, nothing the headmaster or the teacher could do to you make, can make you scared. You're like, I mean, shit. Fuck you, man. <laughs> yeah. What you gonna do? I, I got, you know what I mean? It's weird. I used to see one other kid in there named Stacy, but he stabbed the teacher after that. He was the only one that always used to get the belt from the, the headmaster. Um, Cause I, you know, I didn't understand. I said, fuck that kid. That, I used to go, that kid's worse than me. I thought I was bad. That motherfucker's worse than me. Yeah. He ended up sticking the teacher in the fucking, I don't know where he did, but. <laughs> so w with your kids now, do you feel like you have to make up for the love that you didn't get as a kid are you trying to give give that back to them do you think in like some way like is there some subconscious stuff that that makes you almost try harder with your kids now the way i look at my kids and the way i think i bring them up my love is this is going to work and fighting for different for options for these kids yeah you know my option is my dad and the parents couldn't do that for me you know they give us no good start my kids are going to have everything when they start in life they're going to have a house have a car they have a they're going to have options when they start their life mm. they're not going to worry about uh you know money or this and that to get to different places because you know all they're going to have to worry about is enjoying life or just figuring out their own selves in life yeah. figuring out where they well, who they are in, in this mm. life and i know it's hard for a lot of people because they get lost in all this shit with stuff on tv social media but it's on them. I mean, at least that's that's the, that's my job. Yeah. You know, my job is to put food on the table. You know, um, provide for these kids and make sure that everything is looked after for them. That's that's all I want to, do. and that's that's what I'm doing. I'm not worried about um, anything else. I, it's so many times when I went to school, I, I didn't go to camp, couldn't afford it. You know, lunchtime was the worst for me. I, I just I just hated school because everyone made fun of us mm. until I got 
you know, and that's why I had no friends because I had to beat everyone up. Yeah. Girls included. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you make fun of, I got expelled from one of the schools for smacking a girl in the face for getting spat because I didn't, I couldn't handle that. Yeah. You're a fucking black, fat, fucking poor, whatever. The, that's all they could hurt me with. And kids are cunts too. I'm, kids, you know what they're like? Yeah, kids, kids are cunts. Kids have no filter and they don't give a fuck. And a lot of the times too, like, because I, I thought about it when I kind of left school and like, you know, as you get older, and then especially with Facebook, like you're seeing kids, right, that you went to school with, and I'm off doing whatever I'm doing and been traveling the world, and, and I was the dude that everyone picked on, and now I look at all those kids and I'm like, I'm like, fuck, you're a loser. Like, that sucks, but I feel sorry for them now because <laughs> it's like they, but their life was shit before, and their life's still shit now. And it's like, I almost can't be mad at the kids that did bully me because their life was shit. It I, was the way that they, they I, were taken out on me because of the kind of unhappiness that, that they had going on. It's funny with me because I, I, I used to bully the bullies. All the nerds used to hang out with me and I used to go beat up all the bullies. <laughs> that's the funny thing at school. I mean, the, I used so to... that's why you're the super Samoan. <laughs> no, that's because yeah. it's funny. Though, like I said, all the kids used to... Or was, most of the kids just come and say, oh man, I'm getting bullied on by that guy. And I used to go and bully them. Mm. I had no uh, the only friends uh, I had was those sort of guys because that's all I was doing I was, I was by myself mm. <laughs> and uh, when I look at people on social media I don't even look I look at normal friends or close friends like, oh man hey what's up I don't look at them and feel sorry for them I just I just think you know that's just I the guys that I didn't know closely or the guys that I thought I'd bully I, I said oh man I, I apologize to a lot of them did I do anything wrong if I did I'm sorry yeah you know that's all I've, i don't feel sorry from in their life because that's just life how it is things yeah. change i mean you especially with life and everything that comes with it you're gonna die and that's the way you gotta live your life as best you can and that's the only way you have to live it i mean i don't accumulating shit and when people look on social media they post good shit and they don't tell you about what's what's really happening yeah. you know, they think they try to make us some fairy tale lifestyle like um uh like it's you know, all gravy, this and that. You've got all this sort of shit. Man, ain't none of that shit, George. You know, I don't. I look at it and I just start laughing. I say, "Holy shit, that's crazy." Yeah. But I don't look at anyone's life and think. I mean, I I, I feel sorry for. I'm jealous of it. It's just you know, I look at it and it goes, "Fuck, that's pretty cool." Yeah, it's just them doing them. It's just them being them. You know, they do. You do you. That's it. You just have fun and do your life. And um, that's basically the way it is. When I look at people uh, from from I know. The ones from school, I, I've apologized to most of them if I've hurt them. <laughs> Fuck, I've done something. <laughs> but uh, I think they all understood. That a lot Where of them you were knew, coming from. A lot of them knew my circumstances anyway. They just mm. felt sorry for me. Yeah. They, felt, a, they felt sorry for me and they just thought, well, anyone would feel sorry for someone else that was so fucked up. They're like, what are you even doing in this class? Fuck me, you're fucked up. <laughs> it's no way for a kid to grow up, man. Like, fucking hell. Like, it's got to... Because you just... You don't know. You're so vulnerable as a but the, kid. Yeah, you know? the thing is, the, the kid wouldn't even know that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but I didn't know that. It's, it, I just... It fucks you up, but you don't know any different... Well, I guess school's what really gets you because then you start seeing kids with nice shoes and lunches. I, and I, I, I never I never wanted the pity from any of these people. I just fucking... I'll take your shit. <laughs> that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens, which is wrong. Mm. You know? And um, that's the way I was conditioned from my, from my side. And... and that's the thing though growing up you wouldn't know these sort of things because you think that's normal it's normal yeah you think getting beaten up so you don't go to school for three weeks is normal you don't think you know them um yeah you just think it's normal you know? yeah when and you, you when, don't realize that until later on yeah when you first got money like proper money was it a weird thing to go from like you'd spend this whole childhood going without and then well, now it, you can do whatever the fuck you want it took a while because at the end of the day because I I, I I won my first um i was working at a, a place called uh tabco in manly and they, they used to make uh tablets for uh blackmores they're, they're all the tablets that people buy and eat you have for health supplements they used to, we used to make them i was only a laborer and i had to labor there and i'd make like 300 dollars a week um and it was just enough to get by i mean i didn't have a car or nothing um and I, when I won my first tournament in the Oceana, and I, you know, I wasn't even supposed to be in there, just because I was living with Lucy Toy, uh, she was friends with Tarek. She goes, oh, you can be in this tournament. And I said, okay, fine. The <laughs> prize money was $10,000. It was three fights. Um, there was no UFC back then. There was no pride. It was just uh, kickboxing, K1. And I, and I said, yeah, I trained hard for that. I even stopped smoking. I trained hard and I won that. So I'd won $10,000 in 27 minutes. It was more than I made in six months working there, that fucking shithole. Yeah. 
And I shouldn't say it, I should have. It was just the place they gave me a job and I was hard because I'm like, fuck. And I, I sweated like a, a fucking slave. Yeah. For, for I think it was 16, uh, I, was, I was actually way less, but I, I made $10,000 in 27 minutes. And I was like, whoa. You know, I thought I was okay. I mean, my wife, Jewel, used to buy everything for me. Food, fucking this and that. And How long was, have you been together? Um, it'll be... 12 years married, but uh, 20 something years. Uh, so she's yeah. been with you when you were broke as fuck. She used to support me. Fuck. She used to support my black ass. I swear to God. What a boss. She used to come from Campbelltown to Manly and I, she used to support me. I had no food, no rent sometimes. But when I won that money, I, I, I said, wow. My first thing I bought was a doona for the bed. <laughs> I bought a, a TV and video for the room, you know, because even though I had no money or we had no money, she used to take us out for dinner every night. Yeah, right. And you know, and I bought that doona. I bought, I went shopping, bought a heaps of clothes. I got a TV and video, and I was so happy. I was like the the, the richest man in the world, and that's I didn't even know. Okay. And that's uh, that to me was uh, something really awesome. We were just flatting uh, in uh, with Lucy. We didn't even have a house. It was just that feeling of um, being able to buy something like that. I was like, oh shit! I bought me a brand new doona, a fucking a TV and video, and one. You know? Yeah, yeah. You no, know, and um, and we went out for dinner, and then watch videos. Um, Back when you'd like go to the video store, fucking cheap, had the, cheap Tuesday, bro, Dollar they, Tuesday. They still had those things, so it was it was a good experience for me. It was the first taste of money that I've ever had, and then the the then I went to and then from then it just climbed. The yeah, and I was gonna climbed. say, and like ten ten thousand dollars is a lot different to like the Mark Hunt money in in two thousand fourteen. You know what I mean? Well, like, the next year I won a million bucks. Fuck, what'd you win a million bucks for? For the K one. Oh, when uh, you did the K one thing. Yeah, yeah, that was the next year. So I won. Um, it was actually no. That was two years later. So I won the next year was a uh, twenty-seven thousand dollars as a fight uh, for the Oceania. Then I won. Um, uh, then I got. Th- uh, I think it's thirty or forty uh, for competing in Japan. Then the next year I won a million bucks plus the contract, plus a work contract worth two hundred fifty grand US. Back then it was like double, mm. which I could have been. I should have been on a five hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah. But you get ripped off first country, but you know it went from there. Just keep climbing, and um, it's a, uh, it's funny. I mean, Jules always says you're gonna be in debt for me for life, and I said that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 I never forget these things, um, especially times like that, and that feeling of, of being able to buy that doona and that TV and video, was my best feeling. I was like, it's holy shit. Every time I've been supported by Jules, she supported everything. Every time, food, everything, and now I get the chance to repay her. Yeah, it was so good for me. You know, I ended up um, quitting my job uh, after working there uh, four hours, and I moved out um, out Campbelltown, and then I've been there ever since. Fucking crazy, man. Yeah, we we got our first house in um fucking a while ago. But it's funny, man. It's just amazing. I like I said, I've never you that, some of those times in your lifeline, you'll never forget those positions or times you go, oh fuck, that was the best thing. How could I forget that? Fuck, yeah, you'll never forget my first car. Um, was a, a full Tasha. I bought that uh, from the auctions, you know, <laughs> for uh, I think it was like uh, six thousand dollars or something. I bought it. I was like, oh, fuck, I got a car now. Yeah, look at it. It was boy. awesome. It was awesome. Then the next year, I, I won the ocean. I bought a, the Monaro when it just came out. I still got the Monaro. Oh, you got one of the when they redid like the the brand yeah. new Monaro redo. Yep. The CV8 this is my first first car. It was a demo car. I bought it. She was so fucking angry at me for buying it. <laughs> Fuck. Are you yeah. are you like now? Are you like a material dude? Like you love to buy nice shit, or you know, when you I was still pretty fucking. I've always like I've always liked nice shit because I as growing up as a one of the as, as a poor kid I never had nothing. Mm. And you've had nothing, you want oh fuck I want that I want that and I'm just trying to tick off the list a list of what I want and buy and you know just along the way just buy it and okay. The thing is when you get that you're over it. Mm. It takes me about an hour. It depends on what it is, or if it's a car, an hour, a couple of hours of driving it around, or a bike. I'm over it. Then I just, that's it. I don't, know, you know, I'm not. Uh, so you're gonna stop. The only thing I want to buy. Shit or what? I've stopped already. The only yeah. thing I want to buy is, is a Lamborghini, and I've bought, I could have bought one uh, about fucking ten years ago. I could have bought my my Lambo, my dream car, but I bought a factory unit instead, which I, you know. But I, I still want to buy a Lamborghini. I'm going to buy a Lamborghini. What one are you going to get? One I can fit into. I try it's to get probably not many. I know the Hurricane. I, the I Hurricane's get, fucking <laughs> badass, but that's a pretty small car. Well, I'm gonna get a convertible. It's one of the one of the. Uh, Why Lambo, not Ferrari? 
I've, I've, I just love Lamborghinis. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's uh, my dream car, but you know, I'll, I'll, uh, metallic green. You know, it's, well, anyway. Would you, that, it that depends. Green, it depends on what car I want, I, and I. But I know I'm gonna get a Lamborghini. That just, Hurricane, when they first bought that out, they did like that lime green that it that, that it come out like that yeah. Hurricane green. It's pretty fucking badass. That's uh, that's my yeah. Green is my one of my favorite colors. But yeah, a Lamborghini is what I want to get. So you know, it depends. I like um. I'm a the Ferrari man. Rolls. I'm I like the Bugattis. Man. I like I like all those fancy cars, man. Yeah. I just want to get in one and just fucking blow it up. Blow it up, you reckon? Fuck have you ever like fast, done any? Bro. Have you ever done any like racetrack stuff, like being in a race car? Nah, I. I I'll get you in a V8 I, supercar. I got some. Oh, I got some friends. No. I got some friends I, that can do that shit. Yeah. I'd, you be you will you be keen for that? Of course. I like I said. I the only time I did a V8 supercar is when I took off from the cops in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that, but don't, don't do that. It's not good. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, get very bad, very bad. We'll get you in a V8 supercar. This shit's a fucking they're, they're gangster. Gangster is yeah. So you then went from doing the the Aussie kickbox stuff, and then you went to Japan. Is that like the kind of transition? Well, yeah. Like um, I was a big fan of K1, and I and I actually find I ended up being able to compete with those guys. You know, the first time I did it, uh, you know, I won the world title. I'm the only guy from the Oceania to ever win it. Um, I got my first work contract as a professional fighter then. Um, like I said, I won a million bucks and $250,000 contract a year for fighting. So $60,000 a fight, which I got ripped off. Thank you, uh, Dixon McGarvey, piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and then going from there, then, you know, I used to fight six times a year. And then um, I got injured uh, the year after that, 2002, split my PCL. When I came back, I did a comeback to K1. I came back, I, the last time I fought was in Vegas in, against Gary Goodrich in kickboxing. And then after that, I um, got approached by Pride. Yeah. So Pride was mixed martial arts. And then, um, you know, um, Pride gave me 40K to go train with Bass Rutten in uh, Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's old Bass Rutten like? He seems like an intense character, man. Well, I didn't go and train with him. I actually just kept the money and went to train with uh, Steve Oliver and he did. <laughs> and, um, Worked out all right, really, in the end. Yeah. What was it like back then? Because I feel like if you want to step in the MMA game now, like you've got to have good jiu-jitsu, you've got, got to have good wrestling, you've got to have good stand-up, you've got to have good kickboxing, you've got to... Like there's so much shit that you need to understand. Like you look at like like Tyson right now. Like he's in a... I guess the heavyweight division, jiu-jitsu is not... You know, there's not a lot of dudes getting fucking Triangle. subbed right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Mark Hunt ain't throwing no triangles on motherfuckers. But... Hey, it could happen. It could. I'm not saying yeah, never. In, end of the day, man. I, I, you got to remember that the weights, the weights, you know, cater for what they do. I mean. Yeah, that's what that's what I I'm mean, saying. But in like that 205 class, like you got to be able to do everything because you like, got to be. Yeah. You want to fight Johnny Bones Jones? Like you got to be prepared for every fucking thing that has ever been done. Now it's all good. Yeah, I like playing a lot of Counter Strike and shit. So I've been playing the game for a long, long time. What got you into that shit, you kids? Well, it was actually me and my friends. We used to just because we didn't go out drinking afterwards. We just started going and gaming instead of drinking. We just went and gamed. And were you were, were you a big party guy like early on in yeah. your career? Yeah, and I, then I, I partied. I've been partying. For, I'm 45. I've done a lot of partying. Yeah, <laughs> and now like, what point did you get when you were like, ah, fuck, I'm I'm over it. It's hard to recover. Yeah, the only time I party now is if I've, I win the win a title or something. That's it. Otherwise, otherwise, it's hard for me to to bounce back. I just don't understand. The, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's good to celebrate now and then. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And I'm not, I can't knock it because I used to do it a lot. So, end of the day, I mean, you still got to get back to reality and train and work and everything. So, I mean, sometimes I think. Good I don't think there's anything wrong with like. There's nothing wrong with party. having a bender. Yeah, nothing wrong with but that. But I think the problem is when it becomes a lifestyle. Yeah. And then that, that lifestyle hinders. Well, the I've reason done it that for, you were there for, you for, know what for, I mean? For myself, it's, I've done it for the last fuck, seven or eight fights. I've, I've trained hard. I've got on track with fighting. Weight's gone down. I went and fought. Then I partied and kept eating and partying and I just went back to putting on 20 kilos, 30 kilos. Then burned all again. So I've done that cycle for seven or eight times for the last eight fights. And it's stupid because everyone I've worked with goes, why are you doing it to yourself? Why did it get done? You know, but... Because then it gets hard. Like, because you're at that point where, like, you get back now... And then you, I'm at a point like where it's the been fucking hills like. Yeah, I'm at the point where I've fucking climbed so hard now. I'm just about to fucking pop over. Yeah. Because I've trained so hard, I'm at a good point now with fitness and everything. Weight's going good. Everything's going good. I just, 
I'm so adamant. Like I'm never. I'm not gonna go back to putting another twenty kilos after the fight. I mean, I look you know, same as with Ty. He just put on another twenty. He's like back up there now. Yeah. He's back up there. If he's after he just beat Alaski, he's back up there now. And then nearly the one forties. I'm like fuck. Now he's got to struggle back to get back up. And I don't think it's a good way to do it. So yeah. I, sh- I should have. I've said that eight times in a row, <laughs> <laughs> which is dumb. You know, it's like a, I think I'm like a glutton for punishment. You know. But anyway, uh, it's a. Uh, I'm not gonna do it again. Oh, I'll fucking, gonna, I'll hold you I'm to not going to be putting on 30 kilos again. And sometimes I like, work with five year and call and they're like, what the fuck, Mark, are you doing? Are you crazy? Uh, fuck. I'm like, oh, shit. How'd you first I meet, understand. How'd bro. you first meet Fabio? I met Fabio years ago. My first trainer was Marcelo. Marcelo Rezende from um, Gracie Baja. He's one of the first black belts, uh, you know, with Elvis and uh, another guy. Oh, Elvis Sinisich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I actually no, want to get him. Not, oh. not Alvis. Uh, well, Alvis is a black belt too, you know. Yeah. But the other, there's another um, black belt. There's three Brazilian guys. Yeah. Um, so I think he was Machado. But anyway, yeah, Marcelo's my first coach. I met Fabio through through uh, Marcelo and Manly and trained there with Steve Olive and all the boys my jiu-jitsu. Because I didn't, you know, I looked at jiu-jitsu like, fuck is this bullshit? Yeah. But I, you know, quickly realized that that, Motherfuckers that, will put you to fucking, sleep. To sleep. It's a, it's a huge game, and fuck you. Take that shit like you'll fuck you up, bro. Yeah. I, I realized that when I was training with Steve, they they, they just fucked you up, man. I'm like, holy shit. And I thought like I felt like a little little tadpole in a fucking shark tank, man. You yeah. know, that's what you feel like. And I thought I just I, I'm the only one with the K1. I said, fuck, I'm fuck, I'm fuck anyone up. Next minute, I come down to to wrestle. Did you just I'm saying to the to Steve Oliver, and he's gonna say, just get up, bro. Get up, and he goes. You come and get up. <laughs> Went down there, put me down there for the next six weeks, knee ride in my face, everything fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the worst six weeks of my life. But I understood. I said, fuck, I never say yeah, a bad word it. about the ground or anything. You just in the game. And they took it, you guys, oh, sweet bar. You, man. <laughs> I understand what, what hard work it takes because, man, you don't understand until you feel it. I yeah. felt that shit and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Especially when you're tired and some fucking 80 kilo guys on you fucking guy, you little cut. And <laughs> wait, big, like good <laughs> jiu-jitsu dude. So like, what, what would Fabio weigh, you think? Oh, Fabio is about 107, 100 or something. And Fabio is fucking, bro, he, he's a, one of the best fucking jiu-jitsu players I've wrestled of. He knows how to put weight on and he goes, man, it's a different level. These guys are fucking amazing. Dude, and yeah. that's what like, so yeah, so Fabio is like, let's, let's say 105 kilos. But it feels like he feels like he's 300 yeah. kilos. Yeah, like him, it's yeah. fucking crazy yeah. the way that somebody that knows jiu-jitsu can put weight on you. Oh, these, extra weight. That's why they these guys are black belts. That's why these guys are like you know they they, they just like I said I can't give them enough props. It's next level shit, bro. Mm. For me, especially coming for, as a striker coming to these jiu-jitsu guys, and 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 my my first instructor was 80 kilos, but he felt like a tank. Like you know he. Yeah. He was huge. He was Good amazing. luck getting them off once they're on. Bro, I didn't even, you know, I just go, if it's not a real fight, start again and restart again. And yeah, learn. So the only way to learn, don't try and brute force these motherfuckers. They'll fuck you up. The, you know, the, there's no way. The good thing too with Fabio, like... He, he knows how to work. He knows how to work. He knows how to make you work. And, and for his size, he can make you work. And it's not, not by using power, like a, mm. you know, like it's all technique, you know? And, but how fun is training with him though like he's he's the king of like like talking shit and like he makes it he makes it such brutal like it's brutal when you train like really you know go hard with him but he, he still has a way of like making it fun and yeah, i think he's that's, a, what, a, that's he's what, an, what i enjoy he's an amazing coach Fabi. he's a good coach you know i mean even all my coaches um that mm. i've had for ground i've never been able to tap any of them out once no once they will never let you, man. I'm like fuck. And even when you try hard, you know you just go, I give up fucking trying. Fuck, <laughs> fuck your black belt, man. I'm fucking. You know, I, I walked into uh, uh, to Marcelo's uh, uh, school in Manly with a, with a fucking it was pink actually a pink belt, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I tried to walk up to the mats. He got so angry. He says, Mark. What are you doing with the belt, man? Take the belt. I was like, fuck it, I need to keep my fingers here. <laughs> Even it got me a white belt. I was like, it was the funniest shit, man. So you said you're a purple belt, though. That's no, yeah. jo- that's no joke. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I got my purple belt from Steve Oliver. He's good because of the. I mean, I've been doing it 13 years now. Pur- I should be a black belt. Purple belts will fuck you up. You know? <laughs> are know, you gonna? Man. Are you gonna? I just, I just didn't um, go to the gi training, yeah, training. because I'm, I'll, you know, I've been fighting guys top level already. Black yeah. belts, you know, as a white belt fighting. 
fucking black belts were in the MMA business. So all I could learn was just defenses. Yeah, you know, yeah. wall defenses, ground defenses to understand what they're doing to get a better concept of how to protect myself and save myself from the submission. So that's how I understand. So have you ever been submitted in the UFC? Oh, a lot of times. Yeah, you my have? first fight I got submitted with a with a with a basic fucking uh, sweep. And and he went to pretend to sweep. I went to defend. He came up with a fucking Kimura. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say yeah, it's probably Kimura game at like your weight. Yeah, it's it's never a, a triangles. No one's triangle on that neck. Well, only the, you know who Nogle, the fuck Nogle, could triangle Nogle, you? Nogle, someone could do something like that, but yeah, you know, or we're doing or some something like that. But you know who knows? It depends. Yeah, I mean, I got so lucky. Like I had no idea what i was walking into when i walked into gala brothers like i just fucking google maps that shit it was the closest one to my house i just Train, went in man you got know, an intro the suit. best yeah the I, best, I, I, mean, got, I got so lucky dude yeah you'll understand about it i mean well fabio is the best in in, in, in down under he just, you know he's one of the best um it's sick too just, having like a coach that still competes and he and he's young yeah. he's younger than me man fabio is like fucking 33 i think He's really young too. He's, he's an amazing teacher and he's a fucking competitor too. So he doesn't just talk his shit. No, yeah, he You see him walking it. Yeah, he that's fucking like, that's backs why, it up. That, that's why I, um, anyone that does talk and walk their shit, you say, it's not like the guys that talk their shit and they're just talking. Yeah. Dude, man, walk it, bro. You walk that shit, bro, and then you can talk that shit. You know, you'll get the respect. If you're just talking that shit, you never get the respect. Nah, I fucking 100% yeah. agree. Do you, do you think you could, you'd go ever, like, go back and want to get, like, a black belt once you, like, proper retire? I do, I do want to. Because that would be the way to, for you to keep in shape, man. Like, if I know, you, you I, say, I, I know all that. all the other shit, and you just go full jujitsu. I, I, well, that's, like I said, I, I wanted to do that. I said to Fabio, I said to one of the boys, I think I said, I want to go and do, get my black belt and go and train full time. Um, it's just a, right now I got to concentrate on yeah, fighting. Yeah, you can't do it now. It doesn't yeah. make sense. But like you were talking about when you retire, you don't want to blow out. Well, that's the fucking way to do well, it. Just hey, get on the mats through. Hey, man, I've got uh, Gracie Baja and uh, where Robbie and them's team are down the road from my house. In five minutes. So, you know, I could go in there and, you know, once, once my time, work, get son. in there, bro. I'll be in there. You know, I just, like I said, I coming from a standing strike, uh, striking background is different from the ground. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not used sure. to that claustrophobic shit. I'm like, fuck it. Get off me, cut! Your fucking breath stinks. You fucking, you don't fucking have a shower. You know, some people don't brush their teeth on purpose or don't have a shower on purpose. Just to fuck you up. <laughs> Put their fucking, and you're like, oh shit, the fucking sauna's coming. <laughs> the heat's coming. I don't know why, but I fucking, I just like the, because uh, I, I play like a lot. Of, I'm not that good at passing and shit, so I play like a lot of just. I'm off my back, but I love when I love that thing. It's like I'm in a worse position. Where I'm on my back and it's like, all right, give me your best shit and I'll try and fuck you up off, that's, the, off that's, the back of it. I love that. But that's shit. how I do. That's how I train. Yeah. I have to get in the worst positions and I have to just defend. Yeah. And try and find ways to, to get out of there or just be in the worst position. I'm always on my back. I'm always on my in a turtle. I'm always in the position where where I have to try and just survive. And then I and once I understand what they're trying to do with chokes and everything, it's hard for them, for anybody to get me in a choke or anything these days or anything because yeah, that's I the understand. Way, yeah, that's I understand the way you what learn. you're up to. You know, it's hard when they start chain rolling and there, but still, it's, 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 I understand. It's, uh, you know, from being caught in my early submissions, you know, they won't be catching me now. It's just sort of death. <laughs> well, they've got to get <laughs> close, death, too. Yeah, man. So, so this guy I'm fighting is going to be a submission. Uh, yeah, so artist. who are you fighting in Russia? Um, Alexei Olink, I think his name is. So he's a specialist in um, the Ezekiel choke, but um, I've got a few guys here. Especially Big Jace to here to help me with the that uh, the customized for the executive check, but um, yeah, the only way he'll get that is, is or especially when he gets with heavyweights is when they're tired and he puts yeah. it on secretly or quietly. We don't even know he's on top, and next minute, yeah, you just got to watch that cross that, face. Anytime a, that cross a, face is there, no, nah, it's the fucking it's the fucking stabilizer on the back. That's the worst. Yeah, you think oh, he's just got his arm around my neck. Nah, he's okay. son. Nah, oh, son. I felt that, and I was like, oh dear God. I pretty Fuck. much. I was, I was like, holy shit, he just had my, his arm around my neck and I thought he was just trying to shoulder me yeah. and put my chin in. Next minute, he's fucking putting it in. I was like, oh shit. And, and then, it comes on like that. Yeah, there's the, there's the new, like, so pretty much I, I'll do, I'll go for an Ezekiel every time I get it's the fucking in, a, worst. In, a, in a mount position. Like, yeah. it's, 
low percentage if people see it coming but you get that new one these days where it's like you're not you're not even having to like grab your arm and then feed yeah. it through you just get the cross face and you just fucking start squit like just start pressing it through man it's just yeah. like an opposite rear naked yeah and it is a motherfucker yeah bro, i pretty much try that like i roll with stuart cooper yesterday and as soon as i was in any position i'm just like oh just trying because it's like it'll fucking cut your shit up all right it's fucked up it's hectic like i said when i when jay said it to me i was like oh god so i just tapped and started again ask questions start again try to position i just you just can't be on your back for that shit bro you gotta be on your side you gotta you know get shit out of there flat like on that. your back is not the move no lying flat on your back is not the way to go especially with MMA. um so you become like this figurehead for Australian mixed martial arts. Like for a long time, like I've been a fan of the sport for fuck 10, 11, 12 years. And it was like, Mark Hunt was the, our guy, our fucking beacon of, of hope uh, as Australian UFC fans. But that's not the case now. Like we've got Robert Whitaker, who's a champ. We've got yourself. We've got Tyson. We've got Bam Bam. we got fucking a host of boys. And then there's a bunch of, of lighter dudes that are coming through like Reese McLaren, that's in like the one FC, like there's we're, shit we're loads. fucking on the way up. There's bro. shit loads. And like I said, you know, I, how's it me, feel to be the granddaddy of that, that pack? Oh, uh, look, man, I, I did a couple of shows. I did two shows to help uh, the, the locals try to get into pride. And shit. so for me, like I said, I'm just winding down my career and I've, what I see now is uh, a lot of different from what everyone else sees. You know, all the young guys coming through, um, that have their own struggles. Like I said, what I want to leave here is all the holes that I've fallen and covered up. And, yeah. I, and the biggest one I think is feeling is trying to close that fucking steroid hole. Mm. To close it up and change these rules so it makes it all even. doesn't matter what you say, man, with all these things. With these fighters coming through, man, there's always, if there's some cheaters in there, they're, they're not going to get a fair go. Man. So how, do, what, how does it work? So like you're at Tiger and then you've got a crew of dudes with you. So all of that is financed by yourself based most, on what? most of it who's coming here to help me work um i i pay a lot of my stuff i mean tigers pay for a lot of the guys here it depends you know um it's that's why i said it's good it's, it's cheaper to work here with Ty, with the guys here i um for camps i do i pay for most of it mm. a lot of the camps cost 100 150 grand and it's all taxable you have to i have to everything costs because it's fucking tax comes to you man well, you gotta pay your motherfucking tax bro they, they don't fuck around they're ringing the phone where's our money mm. You know, the government's the gangsters, bro. They I was going to say, they're a fucking they're, gang. They're fucking gangsters, bro. They don't fuck. It doesn't matter where the fuck you are. Oh, where, where's our money? What'd you say, boy? Um, can I pay you? No, no, no. Okay, listen. Listen to me very carefully. If you don't give me um, the money you owe us right now. We're going to throw you in a cage, son. We don't, even, we don't waste our time throwing a cage. We're going to start taking from your accounts. Mm. That's what they do. So they start garnishing. So... They sent me a letter and then uh, this is like a couple of times ago and he goes, okay, where's our money? Oh, okay, you got, okay, we're going to start taking it from your account. Answer the calls, listen to this, blah, 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 you know, and I'm like, and then they, they start paying your dues and I said, okay, sweet, uh, payment plan? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's the end of the day, that's what happens, you know, they don't fuck around. Yeah. People don't realize this, uh, camps uh, cost money. All this shit costs money. You've got to pay for some. So when you're doing taxes, you've got to claim all that shit. So yeah. That's the only way to, to, to get it even, get some of it back. Yeah, you know, so you're, your you're paying all, yeah, for this. People think it's uh, like someone makes who makes 500 or a million dollars, half of that goes tax straight away. Yeah. Take half of it away and then the rest goes to this or whatever it is. Half of that for tax, half, half of the money you got left for camp, half of that, you know, for the rest of it. It's just, it, it all adds up. So when you first made that million dollars, when you won the million bucks in K1, well, like, it was gone straight away. I got ripped off from it. I lent my fucking manager three, four hundred grand. I was going to say, like, who, I who my, did you have uh, in your corner to help you manage this shit? No one. So you got fucked. My manager was in my corner, but he's the one that ripped me. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I did was bought my parents' house, cash, which was good, and then the rest of it got ripped. So that's the thing, though. That's why I say it's a lot of these kids these days. Um, it's, it's good management. Mm. People that don't rip you off. Because I feel like all that shit is like... It seems like people know now more, but the era you were in was the wild. Well, there was no. Like, you were just fucking gunslinging back then. Like, well, that, that, that's why. That's why I just said there was no one there yeah. in front saying, filling up the holes, giving advice. Yeah. For me, I have a lot of people ask me a question. I say, okay, this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. It's easy. Because I had to go through the fucking holes and fall in. So yeah. the guys that come through are good enough. They start making the coin. Just say, 
get a good management team, get people to happy around, to take your money, invest properly, and that's it. Why the fuck do managers rip people off? Why is that just a thing? Probably that, because they that, don't have money themselves and that's what they do. I don't, I don't know. Some people are just weasels. But isn't it super fucking short-sighted to take 300 grand off Mark Hunt, who becomes one of the best heavyweight fighters of all fucking time? Isn't it, that... It doesn't matter about... Isn't that fucking cutting your nose to spite your face? Yeah, but that doesn't for, for guys like that, it's always a short fix. It doesn't matter about the long term unit or whatever it is. It doesn't matter whether it's three hundred, four hundred, ten, twenty, you know, fuck Mike Tyson, four hundred million. Come on, this 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 That's the ultimate like Come on, you, you look look up, at it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. It just there's always gonna be some if you if like, if you're gonna be an ass, there's always gonna be something to write you. But like I said, there's no one If you're gonna be an ass, there's always someone to write you. There like, was no one to it. explain. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wish I had someone there and for me to explain to me what to do with money or how to get money. Like I said, coming from someone with no money to making a lot of money and doing it, I'm fucking like, oh shit. And you don't know. No one tells you this and shit. Like, so, but the other guys, like my manager helping Zen and these other guys, they said, okay, man, yeah, they, they know what's up. They're, he's already onto them. Yeah. You know, he's already onto them doing the right thing and making the right choices. That's, the end of the, that's what it's about. It's crazy. Like you just said, you bought your mum and dad a house with that million dollars. Well, Two hundred and thirty thousand dollar cost an NZ, and I didn't even have a house myself. The rest I got ripped. So, you obviously don't have like hard feelings towards your parents for like the upbringing. If then you went back and bought them a house, right? It's like I said. I don't. I, I forgive. Otherwise, I would never forget. Yeah. I forgive, and that, and I said, well, they just don't understand. They didn't know. Was it hard no for you to forgive them? Do you think? Well, I didn't look like I said. I didn't look at my parents as 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 being bad people because I just thought that was normal. Yeah. You know, I I, I don't get that. I don't. I, I just thought, oh, it's just. Just no the one told cards. them. Yeah. It's just the cards that were dealt in life. God said, "This is your cards," and that's the reason why this is your cards because you're going to be one of the best fighters in the world. And you're going to inspire a lot of people to do different things or better things. You're going to help millions of people, and that's what you're going to do. Yeah. And that's why I became who I am or do what I'm doing because. If that's not the cards I was dealt, what would I be doing? But well, there was two different options. Go to jail and be a fucking dirtbag criminal fucking rest of my life and keep doing that thing or use uh, fighting the gift that I was given to, um, to help others and benefit others. That's mm. just the choices. And I chose this because I knew this was wrong. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people that once they get into that world, like I had Graham Abbott Henry on the podcast, who was like a notorious Sydney underworld figure in like the eighties. He like run all the fucking, all the under underworld shit. And he just fucking liked crime, man. He just liked it. He did all these like super elaborate armed robberies and stuff like that. And like, he, he just loved it. And even, even after the, you know, he went to, he ended up going to jail for, he stabbed a copper in the neck. So he did like 15 years or something in jail for that and but even he's like oh yeah i miss it miss the lifestyle miss all the fucking miss the money miss so some people are just like super attracted to like the yeah. lifestyle so i guess like each each their own yeah. everyone's different man everyone's been everyone's different in this life and that's what makes it up the way it is but it wasn't diverse it, it wasn't attractive to you to keep doing that well to me um hurting people um you know, I just thought I was a petty criminal, just starting in the gang, starting to fucking grope you, or not grope you, but to groom you to come into their, to their, to their flock and do different shit, worse shit. Mm. Um, I just didn't think that was right. I just didn't want to join groups. I, I didn't think it was, you know, I was training in jail with a, with a mobster, you know, who, um, I was just as flunky. Just, you know, we did weights together. I had the bag from him while he kickboxed it. And, you know, I just, I just didn't think that was me. I, my first encounter in jail was a little guy named Cat standing over someone for his packet of cigarettes. And I said, why'd you let him take his fucking cigarettes? And he told me to fuck up. I was like, oh, look. I was 16. <laughs> I mean, these kids, uh, these guys are older men. But, it, it, you know, it just, it just didn't, it didn't appeal to me. Mm. You know, I just, it didn't appeal to me. I did what I did to survive. Yeah. So you didn't have like, uh, like anger to where you were trying to like lash I was angry because I was, smashing everybody around I, I had a lot of anger so you were the thing was were i knew then? i knew of course i was angry i had a, i had chips on my shoulders yeah i was so angry about and, and i was one of those guys walking around what are you looking at yeah okay you know, or i was one of those dudes i was just <sighs> it was just one of those things it was just an angry motherfucker going around ripping people off <sighs> went uh, you know just did real dumb petty shit i went to Steal car if I needed. I didn't have a car as a guy around stealing cars to go to the shop. But, you know, 
just dumb shit. I went to sc- the school, stole a car, went up to the shop, got something from the shop, drove back down cigarettes, drove back down. The guy that owned the car was standing in the road. He's like, fuck. Mark, that's my car. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, sweet. See ya. You know, just dumb shit like that. And the reason probably he didn't attack me is because my older brothers. I, I don't know. It was just, I did some dumb shit. Yeah. And when just did the dumb shit? When did that anger then go away? Because you're not ang- you're not an angry dude at all now. You're a fucking laugh. Yeah. No. No. I, I I've I've lost I lost it a long time ago. I mean, a lot of guys I met when I was in in um, Sydney a while ago. In fact, I saw them a couple of one of them at the crossing. He goes, he looked at me and I said, Hey man, how you been? He's looking at me. He goes, Fuck, you look different. I said, What? What are you talking about? He goes. Is something in your eyes you look different and i was like fuck i don't know mate what am i hungry or what <laughs> <laughs> it just says you look different as that like, fuck but yeah I, like i said i just put it down to being um someone just trying to get by as a kid yeah um i mean i'm like i said I, i'm glad i didn't go into the rest of the shit with um with the groups um i never liked i like to stand on my own two feet and um i only just hanged out with a, a small group of guys that um that we were just trying to live life as teenagers trying to grow up and survive that's all we just had a shitty city or well a couple of them didn't have shitty lives at home but you know most of us did have shitty lives at home but we enjoyed our company out in the street that's pretty much it mm. uh yeah because it, it definitely is it is it almost like you you found more a purpose and then you you kind of lose the anger when you've got somewhere to focus the energy and the purpose was then to try and be the best fighter in the world yeah, I think I think fighting took a lot of, of of anger away from me because I trained all the time after when I when I went into fighting. Fighting took a lot of anger away from me, and it gave me an out, outlet, you know, mm. not to be so angry at the world for the cards I've been given. So I mean, it gave me that purpose, like you said, it, it did. I, fighting, um, and it fighting found me. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I went away from it a lot of times. I didn't even train, but it still always came back to find me. And then I, when I came to Sydney, I used it as another way to make ends meet. So I mean, I. I I went and fought just to make some money to eat, you know, <laughs> and I was still working a full time job, you know, just doing a lot of shit like that, which is good. Um, you know, it, it only made sense when I cents in dollars when I actually started making a serious money when I when I won yeah. the first Oceana. I'm like this. I think some light switched in my head and because I was still smoking and drinking at the time, mm. just being a fucking one of those bar guys. that said oh, I could have done this. I don't. I didn't say that, but I just I had it in here, but I just. It didn't. The light, light, light switch didn't turn on. Yeah. Till I made that first uh, that ten thousand dollars. I was like, oh wow. Did you ever have like, like when you're sitting on that bar stool and drinking and fucking thinking like, oh, I could, I could knock anyone out or whatever. Was there always. A- I, I used to think I could knock people out when I was just walking on the road. That's how stupid my mindset was. It's was just an angry person. Mm. But did you, you know? did you think that? there was something holding you back from fighting initially before you made that check and that light switch went off? Like, was it, was, were you like worried about putting yourself out there and like not making it or? No, there was nothing to do with that. I just, I know I was trying a few guys uh, that I'd met when I started doing the journey. I mean, Keith Saunders, uh, Aboriginal guy at, at Mundine's gym, he did say, you know, Mark, you've got to get a lot of this behind you. They've got to do this, this, and I'm like this. But I just... You know, I, I didn't look at it like that. Like I said, fighting was just a way to make ends meet. Mm. And um, and I and it, ma- and it made sense when I won the $10,000 and I'd worked six months at Tabco and I only made fucking four fucking... Chump change. Chump change, you know. 10000 for then was a lot of money yeah. for me. You know, I mean, um, it's a lot of money now, but still, it's just the, the what I could do. The, the lights were stopping off and I was like, holy shit. That's when I started, I said to the boss, oh, oh, can I work four hours? Mm. instead of eight work four hours and still trained and then i then i won the next year's oceana i mean i then after that i got a ticket to japan went to fight in japan um made twenty seven thousand dollars and then the next year i won the, the the oceana again for the second time and then that year i won the world title so it just you know it made sense uh, not to you know i stopped smoking i stopped drinking for for the times i was training mm. i stopped for eight weeks to, and i won the world title the k1 world title I was actually the weight I am now, 127. It's weird, eh? mm. <laughs> and it's heavy. Yeah, yeah, that is. But it's funny, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So that was that was my career path, and then I guess shit. A lot of people ask me all the time, Mark. How do you? Why do you? How do I become a fighter like you? And I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I just say you should just buy the book, Born to Fight. It's a different story. Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. I've lived like five lives. Uh, what's the time? 
Yeah, what, how long have you got? I, got I, I haven't eaten, so I need to get out of here. So, no worries. Do a couple more questions, man, and we've got to get, i got to get... Oh, what? fuck, here's my food here. Oi. i got to get in. I haven't had a shower, so... No, that's all right. What else do you want to talk about? What, what else floats Mark Hunt's boat? What do I need to know about? Nothing. I mean, I, everything I've said to you guys on here is the feelings I have, I feel, and some of the stuff that I've done already in my life. Already, it's already out in the book. Like I said, I'm born to fight. Um, I'm going to get it. What's, what's, you can download it before you go on the flight. Yeah. Uh, what else is left for me? I don't know. Like I said, I want to fight five more times and then retire. Um, I've had a long career. I feel like I've lived so many different lives. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, and... and and a lot of them, a couple of them was just living on the edge, you know, homeless, nearly homeless a couple of times, gambling, an addict, fuck. Um, Man, what is it with fucking Australia and gambling, dude? So, like, because I lived in the States for seven years, right? Uh, and, like, I, I just started betting on football, like, fantasy football, and then they were shutting it down. And I'm like, Man, go to Australia. There's fucking pokies. There's greyhounds. There's dogs. There's fucking carriage race. Like, who the fuck cares about carriage racing? But it's man. something to bet on, man. What is it about Aussie culture? Because Bam Bam got fucked up in gambling. Know. Bro, I was on the pokies, man. I used... Fuck that, man. I Pokies got me good, man. I used to make... I used to sandblast steel, right? I used to work in Clyde. I used to make like uh, $1,600 uh, every fortnight. Mm. It was good money. So... I um I, I I became a gambling addict on pokey machines, and fucking when I got my money, I spent it all. I'd starve for four days and wait. You know, I get no money if they have the next fort because you paid every fortnight. Mm. But I'd spend all my money just wasting it like that. And I did. I've done it for years and years and years, even when I was fighting still. I spent the more money I made, the more money I spent. The last time I gambled was online. I spent three hundred thirty thousand dollars gambling. The fuck? I was like a fuck. I'm just a fuck. When I was training for Stipe Camp, I was just a fucking idiot. I'm so what glad. What were you betting on? Well, there's a game online. You can online. You can the, the Baxman bet is like sixteen hundred dollars a pop. What what game is it? It was the Gladiator game. Fucking Russell Crowe the cut. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so you know, I was fuck like you, Gladiator Rusty. fucking cut. I mean, Gladiator game. I said, like, fuck yeah, I gotta get that free spin. So every second third day, I put fifty grand into my online account. I'd, I'd Mark, that's fucking a bad idea. Mate, three three hundred thirty thousand dollars later, I was like, "Fuck, you know, you're a dumb cunt," and that's it. And that's and that's the last time I gambled. That's fucking like Australia, though, man. Like, we why do we do it? There's a it's a crazy culture. Like, even one of my one of my mates. There's so more pokies in fucking pubs than anywhere else. I know. We need to stop it. Why the fuck are we doing it to ourselves? Because what it does is it preys on. Fuck! It doesn't prey on people that, like, I guess it preys on people's desperation. And then there's also people that just have those addictive personalities that do have the That's money. That's me. And then can just fucking, they just do it. Before I had uh, made some money, I was gambling what I, what I fucking made and I wouldn't eat. That's you want a dumb. fucking Lambo, bro. That's, that's, that's how 300 dumb. grand right there. That's how dumb, like I said, that's how dumb I am. And I, I spent about a million bucks in gambling over the years of doing just dumb. Just a dumb motherfucker. I mean, I was just... I don't know, man. I'm addicted personally. I, I'm glad I'm over it. I'm glad I'm not doing that shit anymore. I thank God that I've never been, you know, fuck that dumb cunt. <laughs> I mean, fuck that. Don't, I guess don't be too hard on yourself. It's a trap a lot of people fall into, man. No, I'm serious. It's even in my book. I, I put it out there because I want people to know I fucked up. Mm. I fucked up. Yeah, because even I was listening to Brennan Shaw um, below the belt and he was talking with Bam Bam about the problem he had because he was playing footy and everything, eh? And gambling, yeah. But it probably worked Except out for the Bam Bam. Similar to me, how he, he came up, you know, mm. very similar. Does it is it good? Like, do you take pride in being able to help dudes like him come up? He's twenty six, of course. I'm, I'm for a guy his age. He's really smart. I think he's a fucking nice guy. He's a super nice, very guy. very nice guy. I mean, a lot of the guys are. Like I said, he's got the same issues I like a lot of people do. Gambling, this and that. It's just, you know, it's just the advice. They just need to snap out of it. And what I realize is that the money doesn't last. Mm. It doesn't matter how much you make. It'll always be gone. The more you make, the more you want to spend. Yeah. It's dumb. It's just one of those things. And you become antisocial. You become an angry person. You, you know, you can't even go and socialize when you're a gambler because... Well, well your mood's depending on winning or losing, right? The other time, the, all the times that I, I went gambling, I ended up just spending hours and hours by myself just gambling because it's like from gaming, I just went and sit in the pokies. You know, nowadays I can't do it because fucking everyone knows who you are. Yeah. You know, before I could go and 
go in there and fucking, you know, the bottom of the hill. Oh, hi, Mark. Hey. I'm like, oh, fuck. And they gamble away fucking money. I'm just, I'm just glad that I'm not hooked on that shit, man. What? What's it's a, a killer. It's, it, it'll take your soul, just like fucking drugs. Dude, I go like, when I lived in California, so we were, I was there like seven years, and uh, we used to, it was like me and my best friend, Jay, who I know he's a massive fan of yours, so shout out to Jay. What's and, up, Jay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'd go to Vegas all the time, man. Like, we had like a pretty good hookup at Bellagio, and like, neither of us were big gamblers. Like, I used to play roulette or whatever, but I was just too fucking poor to gamble. And, <laughs> and uh, I was like... I was still poor, and I still gamble. Fuck, nah. we all... I couldn't do it. I was, too, you, I was too broke. I needed to fucking. I needed to fucking eat, mate. I couldn't. Even hey, when, there's nothing left. If I can't starve for four even, days, bro. Even I, when I had money, minimal money, I still gambled it. That's how hooked I was. Stupid. And you go out there, cause you think, oh, I gotta get this free spin. That'll give my money back. It's always chasing. And then when you don't get it, you walk out there. You got a fucking packet of cigarettes that you've you house smoked. Zero money for the next two weeks. Fucking nothing to eat at home or your fucking rent hasn't been paid. You know, that's where it's I... It's not the move. And the thing was, when I did I didn't know anybody. Mm. The only person I knew was Jules and she's like, oh man. She'd come over and said, oh, she'd look after me and pay that. Man, I, I'm lucky. She sounds like a fucking good woman. She is. And I'm lucky that she was there to help me. Otherwise, I'll be on the street. I'll be homeless. I, I was, like I said, a lot of times I was just this close to going back to the way I was. Yeah. Going, robbing motherfuckers and doing this. So many times, and I just thought, fuck, you can't be going back to that. You're a dumb cunt. Yeah, it's, it's just the cycle. It was a cycle that keep going. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, it's definitely, it takes one person to break the cycle, though. Now, I'm glad I'm I mean? lucky I, I broke my cycle of fucking, of, of that shit, because it ruined your life. And, and the thing I'm is, lucky it hasn't ruined my fucking family and shit. You know, I'm, I'm a fucking idiot sometimes. But, um, you know, those that listen to you, I hope you, don't understand, you understand this fucking... You understand about gambling and how it'll ruin but, your fucking but soul. But that's the thing, man, like I was going to say, is that like this podcast is going to go out to fucking thousands and thousands of people. And it's like, this could be the thing. So it's like, you know... Hey, man, you anything to help, that, man. Like yeah. I said, it's better to learn from others than from your own mistakes. You fuck it up yourself. Sometimes <laughs> you got to fuck it up yourself. Hey, man, like I said, people hit the rock bottom, they get fucked anyway. You can learn. The only way is up now, but... It's better to learn from others' mistakes than your own. Yeah, big time. Well, yeah, I remember. I just remember going to Vegas and I'd see like, like old people homeless gambling, fuck. you know. And I'd be like, that. I think that's what like fuck like made me think like fuck. That's bad. Is because it was like a you look into the future almost because it's like they're just old and they're still doing this. Who knows how many how much they put through those fucking things? They're probably just old and they don't give a fuck. Mm. They said, you know what? I'm gonna die. I might just enjoy gambling. Fuck them. Yeah. They don't spend shit loads of just in there killing time. That's what it is. It's just a time killer. Yeah, it's a fucking it, yeah crazy place. Did That's you, what it is. It's a time killer. It just you go there, just, just you take. I got a couple of hours. I'm gonna go spend a couple of money. You know, fucking dumb shit. Mm. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up. We got uh, hour and a half. I appreciate your time, man. No worries, man. All good. Super, I love it. Super approachable, dude. Yeah, talking shit about stuff, but I'm talking shit anyway. Nice to meet you. Thanks for the time, yeah, man. No, I appreciate it, bro. And uh, let me know when you're on the Goldie. All and right, man. We'll fucking hook up. All right, bro. Take it easy, man. Sure, bro. Sure, sure.